the track about an hour and a half or so ago, and track drying continues. Normally, you wouldn't necessarily be concerned about the apron of the racetrack, but Tom Sneaver, the way these guys ran here a year ago, and the way they ran at the similar track in Texas a few weeks ago, you darn well better have the apron dry. Well, no kidding. Any Anything that's got pavement on it uh, is, is a part of the racetrack, including uh, some that doesn't have pavement. You know, the grass is uh, part of the racetrack for these guys, or it was last year, so it'll be fun to watch. If you're not familiar with the racetrack, the turns are banked 24 degrees. The front and back straightaways are basically flat. They're 5 degrees each, and there's a, a double dog leg on the main straightaway. That is the back straightaway, and the transition from the corners onto the flat, not particularly difficult. It's fairly, uh, it's fairly smooth. Yeah, nobody's had any concern about transitions off the corner. It's just trying to get through uh, the entry to three in the middle, uh, between three and four, so uh, uh, that's been the big concern for these guys, and, and really, Eli, what they've had to do before, up till now, is uh, they've been able to sort of drive around some of the problems, and in the race, though, um, you're going to have to be able to drive down low, drive up high, and, and be forced to run through some of the bumps, uh, whether you like it or not. Let's discuss some of the technical aspects for folks who may be enjoying the Pep Boys Indy Racing League for the first time. You've got basically, for these teams, six-speed transmissions. I've talked to most who will say three accelerating gears and three different high gear settings with the ratios, I guess, not very far apart. But there are also other options as well, aren't there? Well, there are. And, uh, you know, like you say, you don't need six gears in those gearbox. A lot of times they'll pull some of those out to qualify to get the weight in the gearbox down. But, uh, you know, it's, it's really a luxury now to have two or three top gears. Uh, you get in the draft and then the motors run a little bit faster. And uh, to protect those things and especially to keep off the rev limiter right. because you're limited to 10,500 RPMs in these cars. They won't let you go above that. It's actually a good rule. It keeps the cost of the motors down and uh, it's part of the series that makes it what it is. Marco Greco's red machine. There you see a good look at the Royal Purple entry for Jimmy Kite out of Stockbridge, Georgia, who starts back in the 23rd position here today. And Bobby Allison is our Grand Marshal. He too on hand and he's set to give the command to fire the engines. He's cute. They're going to... Ladies and gentlemen, it is time for those famous words to start the engines here to give the command tonight for the Visionaire 500. Please welcome Bobby Allison. Gentlemen, start your engines. So the leader of racing's Alabama gang gives the command to fire them up here at the Charlotte Motor Speedway. They'll be rolling, getting set for the start of race number 7 of 11 in the 1998 Pep Boys Indy Racing League season. Back with the start on TNN Motorsports after this. We are back with you here at the Charlotte Motor Speedway. Jim Guthrie, as he was pulling away from his spot on the grid, it looked as though he might have tagged the wall while they were going back and forth to start heating up the tires. Looked as though he might have just nudged the wall here at the Charlotte Motor Speedway. We'll keep an eye on that team. They lost an engine here in the final practice last night and had to go with a uh, well, replacement. With the this, nose of the yeah, car. Yeah, there. there's, there's the front the wing. wing. So uh, he clipped it pretty he good. Sure He's did. heading for the pitch. You could see him passing the other cars trying to get a run into the pits to uh, to see what the problem is, but uh, that's a little unusual at uh, that point in the race. Uh, how are you going to get the nose knocked off without... And I'm not sure of that angle. How you do that without I getting just, the right front or the right rear know. involved? Well, they say no. I just looked up and I said it looked like he had just nudged the wall. I couldn't quite tell, but obviously clearly didn't. As I was saying, they lost an engine last night. Had to put their Dover power plant back in the car, which wasn't ideal anyway, but uh, it's not been there... Uh, last 24 hours, that's for sure. As far as the numbers here this evening for this Pep Boys Indy Racing League event, there you see the 24 starters, with one of them right now on the pit lane, Guthrie. Tony Stewart went quicker than that in practice, but the official numbers can only be set in the qualifying runs as we're turned here on Thursday evening. Why don't we check out the starting lineup for you? 
for this 208 lap event here at Charlotte. Tony Stewart, fourth pole in seven races this year, and Greg Ray in for Billy Boat. Third at Texas for Kenny Brack, and Mark Dismore drives for Tom Kelly. Marco Greco had a super run at Dover, came home third. There's the Dover winner, Scott Sharp. Scott Goodyear, as we told you, worked on his car at Dale Earnhardt's shop this week, and Davey Hamilton switching to the Delora chassis. Raul Boisel from Brazil. He was eighth at Phoenix this year, his best finish of the season. A good rookie from 97, Jeff Ward. Brian Tyler, Tom Sneva, the only guy not to do any last session practicing here yesterday. Yeah, they didn't go out late, uh, but a good qualifying run for that team. Yeah. And, uh, you know, they're getting more laps all the time, and, and that's what it takes to get it towards the front. And, of course, Eddie Cheever, the Indy 500 champion. John Paul Jr. is on hand, the former IMSA GT champ. And there's Buddy Lazier, who won the Indy 500 in 96. Ari Leyendike himself, a two-time Indy 500 champ. And Andy Michener, who was a rookie on the Pep Boys IRL scene here this year. Dr. Jack Miller, 21st place finish at Indy and Dover. Stefan Gregoire. On down the line, Tice Carlson. He's in for Steve Knapp, who found himself in a jam a weekend ago at Dover. And there are problems right off the bat for Wardy as Jeff came off and again goes spinning through the grass. Well, we got some unusual things happening here on, on, on the pace laps. I'm not sure what Morty was doing. Uh, he had to probably be just trying to get the tires up to temperature. So, uh, you know, the track obviously is surprising these guys after the rain shower. And there you see Jim Guthrie, Sam Schmidt, Jimmy Kite, and new daddy, Donnie Beachler. His wife giving birth to a baby just yesterday back in Springfield, Illinois, and he returned here this afternoon. Yeah, actually, his older brother was uh, real nervous all week before the baby was born. He wasn't sure if he was going to be an aunt or an uncle. <laughs> Thank you very much. That is Buddy Lazier, the Hemmelgarn Delara, starting in the middle of the field 14th. We have those two views for you, front and back. John Paul Jr., Starting 13th in the Visionaire G-Force, Scott Goodyear. He'll be giving us a ride from his seventh place starting spot. And Scott Sharp will ride with him from sixth. And Green is green. in the air. The start was a little bit spread out there, Eli. I, I'm not sure if these guys are just being real careful trying to get these things up to speed. Meanwhile, Sam Schmidt comes down the pit lane here on the start, while others now begin to chase their way down the back straightaway. With Scott Sharp. He took a look underneath uh, Kenny Breck, but uh, decided, hey, it's early in this race. Let's not force anything yet. Of course, Tony Stewart, right that time, didn't get the jump he wanted. No, but uh, Chico Colors certainly did, though, for yeah. Greg Ray. Seventh, eighth, and ninth. Marco Greco in the red machine being bypassed as Hamilton moves up along with Ward. Yeah, Ward was on the outside there. The uh, the orange and white car in the middle of that three right there. That yellow machine you saw was Scott Goodyear. There's Jeff Ward. Greco behind him in ninth. Hamilton trying to take that Delora to the outside of Scott Goodyear. Well, that's a, a G-Force being passed by uh, that Delara, and Davey's probably got a smile on his face. He'll move up to sixth spot on that exchange as we ride with Scott Goodyear. You saw his left hand just came back on the wheel just as we came into this uh, into the screen, and uh, he's reaching over looking for a fuel mixture is what he would be doing on the, on the left side of that dash uh, opposite the wheel. There's a little knob there, and they'll say, turn it to such and such a position. Meanwhile, up front, Tony Stewart in that Glidden's yellow and orange machine has caught Greg Ray. This is for the lead. Lap number five. And he's got it. He's got it as he uses the banking to try and whoa himself back down just a bit. Well, that's a little bit like a slide job at Winchester or Salem in the sprint cars. But uh, Tony's done a great job at the beginning of these races. He's matured quite a bit. He doesn't care about leading the first lap. Uh, you know, a year or two ago, he wanted to lead every lap. And, uh, you know, he's matured a lot throughout the years and uses his head a lot more now. That purple machine, Buddy Lazier, all the way up to ninth right now. He's third in line in that scramble. And we're riding with buddy now let's see how it might dance around a bit here in three and four you can see the you can see his hands and, and the wheel sort of vibrating in him and there you see one machine slowing raul 
Boisel having problems on the straightaway. And Caution is on the racetrack. So Caution, for the first time. Well, now they've withdrawn it. They were showing it and took it down. They were holding it in their hand and never did wave it. So they'll allow that machine to coast on in. Well, they obviously determined that Bosell's motor didn't leak enough fluid on the racetrack, but I don't know if he's going to get back to the pits. You can see the fire underneath. He's obviously uh, maybe knocked a hole in the side of that thing. It's got more ventilation than right. it was designed with. Ryan Howard had that caution flag in his hand, drew it up, and never did unfurl it. Bobby Gerald has an update on that man, Raul Boisel. Eli Scanner Communication initially indicated that it was a blown engine for Raul Boisel. If so, that would be two in a row because they blew an engine at Dover. He is running very slow out on the raceway right now. We anticipate him trying to coast to a stop here in the pits, but we're afraid that the engine is done, and that's going to be all she wrote for Raul Boisel here tonight at Charlotte. And now the caution is out because further checking by the IRL official shows as you see there are all sorts of problems he won't make it around there is fluid on the racetrack so caution on the speedway definitively here at lap number nine yeah i was a little surprised it took that long because uh, you could see the fire out low the, obviously they had oil something out of the side of the motor so it had to be le leaking some fluid but Ra raul's been around a long time experience he probably got it down off the racing groove as quick as he could Caution on the speedway. The first of the evening here at Charlotte. There is your race leader, Tony Stewart. Took the lead at lap five from Greg Ray. Back with you here at the Charlotte Motor Speedway. Quick reminder, coming up next weekend here on TNN Motorsports, the powerful pickups of the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series will be doing some high-speed hauling at the New Hampshire International Speedway. Don't miss the Pennzoil VIP Discount Auto Center 200. That is Sunday, one week from tomorrow, August 2nd, 1 p.m. Eastern, right here on TNN Motorsports. Field having just gotten the one-to-go signal, we told you Sam Schmidt had come down the pit lane for an unscathed. Vince, what are you hearing? Well, Sam Schmidt did have a problem. They brought him in. They thought there was a small fire on board, possibly just because the exhaust was too hot. They sent him back out on the track for a couple of laps just to see what the car, how the car reacted. Right now, they're not exactly sure. Larry Nash, the team owner, you see is uh, back behind me. Constant communication with Sam, talking about how the car feels, maybe to get some identification as to what went wrong and caused that early pit stop. A lot of bad luck for this team. They hope to turn the fortunes around tonight. Yeah, they blew an engine here on Thursday afternoon. It was a fresh rebuild at the time. Gave no warning, Sam. Just blew up. Yeah, Vince and Bobby also. Jimmy Kite came into the pits under that yellow and, uh, and did some adjustments. So you might check that out for us, too, if we could. We'll update on that as Green Flag is back in the air. And on lap 14, Tony Stewart quickly up through the gearbox. Well, it looked like Greg Gray had, had some problems speed, getting yeah. up to speed. He got passed by his teammate, and uh, and Buddy Lazier is going to the front, boys. Look at this down Look the back straightaway. You've got Sharp working to the inside. Dismore is there, and Sharp will try and come out with the lead if he can hold it against Tony Stewart. Well, we had both Kelly cars and Tony Stewart running three abreast. From Sharp looking rearward right now. Side by side with Stewart for the lead. And right behind him, that's his teammate, Mark Dismore. Outside. Again, Sharp to the inside, Stewart to the outside. For the lead in the Visionaire 500 at 202 miles an hour. Well, Dismore's right there. Again, this is inside Sharp's car. Looking at Tony Stewart, sizing him up. Again, looking back, you've got Dismore on the scene as well. The other Kelly racer right there to the left of your screen. And but, there's Kenny Brack coming into the picture. Yeah, but I don't, if you, I don't know if you noticed Dismore's car wiggle. He was up high, and the thing gave a pretty good wiggle right in the middle of the corner. Yeah, Dismore just wiggled right past Sharp, though. He'll wiggle right by him to the outside to grab second spot. Stewart, Dismore, Sharp. Kenny Brack on the inside. Then the green machine is Ray right there swinging by. We were purple as Buddy Lazier. We were worried about Greg Ray. He didn't come up to speed very well, but he's coming back to these guys. Sharp, nice and calm. There's Dismore, number two on the screen there. Behind car number one, Tony Stewart. Stewart has led every race this year. He's led 17 of the 20 races.
races he's been in. Well, this is pretty good stuff at 215 miles an hour, Eli. Again, there's Ray, part of that Texas connection. He's from Plano as they go around Jimmy Kite in that Royal Purple machine. Yeah, he made a stop earlier, and they obviously have some problem that they can't get a grip on. Riding again with Sharp, looking back towards Ray right behind him. Sharp is in fourth, Ray in fifth. Down the back straightaway, just entering turn three. Here the throttle, here in blurp of the throttle, Eli. He's just trying to get to the corner with as much pedal as he can get. Around Guthrie's machine they go, putting him a lap down. And that blue number 23. Well, again, we, we didn't find out what exactly happened when he knocked the nose off on the, on the pace lap. Couldn't have been good. No. And there's the spread, three-tenths of a second from first Stewart back to Dismore in second. Dismore, of course, if you're new to IRL or Indy cars in general, he's the guy who had that horrific crash in practice back in 1991 for the Indy 500. You might remember of seeing it. Totally uh, destroyed the car, nearly did the same to his body. Basically had to relearn how to walk that entire summer. And here he is back racing and racing well, of course, many years down the road. But that was a scary time for him back in 1991, as you may remember. Yeah, it really was. And this guy, look at this wheel of wheel. Oh, great battle right there. That is for fourth spot. Sharp in the orange and yellow and Ray in the green. That is for fourth and fifth. That interlocking the wheels and then wiggling, now that, that isn't a, uh, a good way to grow old, Eli. I know that. That's the voice of Tom Sneva. I'm Eli Gold. Vince Welch and Bobby Gerald are on the pit lane and in the garage for us here at Charlotte tonight. We are live on TNN Motorsports, the Pep Boys Indy Racing League. Raul Boisel, we told you earlier, brought out the first caution and apparent blown engine at lap number nine. Let's get the update on him in the garage. That's right, Eli. Still down here on the pit lane, but Raul, how disappointing is this? Two weeks in a row with a blown engine. Oh, it's very disappointing. This is the fourth race they don't uh, finish, and uh, normally that's... Uh and that's not uh, really happened. I always finish races and uh, it's frustrating because there's not I can do, you know, it's just uh, and no warning on the engine, just uh, blew up early at this stage of the races. Not, not fun. We're sorry to see you out of it. This was to be Raul's first night race tonight. It lasted only a few laps, Eli. Sure did, as the leaders go around that blue machine of Stefan Gregoire. Well, they got to traffic, Eli, and uh, Dismore just blew by Stewart as soon as right. they caught traffic. I don't know if that's a traffic situation or, or Tony's car's going away a little bit, but Dismore's gone. Matter of fact, the last lap, Dismore at 213 miles an hour, Stewart at 206. So a significant difference. This last lap, Dismore at 210, Stewart at 205. There you see Eddie Cheever shows himself moving from ninth up to eighth, having got around, gotten around Hamilton moments ago. And back up front, Mark Dismore and Kelly Racing showing the way. Having taken the lead at lap number 24, after the first handful of laps were led by Greg Ray, and then Tony Stewart led from 5 through 23. 26 laps complete, 2.08 make up the distance here at the Charlotte Motor Speedway. Back in a moment. We are back at Charlotte under caution. Remember we told you that Tony Stewart had dropped to six and seven miles an hour off Mark Dismore's pace? But while you folks were away for a few moments, the smoke erupted from behind the Glidden Menards. And that's a tough, tough break. It really is. You know, when they run them that hard, uh, stuff happens. But th this team's had some engine trouble throughout the year. It, it hurt them at Indianapolis. Uh, they've been fast everywhere, but... Uh, Reliability sometimes hasn't been their strong point. Let's go down to Vince Welch. With team manager Larry Curry. Larry, I, I know this isn't the way you wanted to see the early stages of this race unfold. You guys have been fast all week. What's the problem here? Yeah, I'm, we're not sure. All of a sudden, the thing starts smoking, and we don't know yet what's wrong with it. Everything on the telemetry looked good, so... We're given no indication that there was a problem? None. So, same old story, it seems like. Disappointing for Tony Stewart and uh, Team Menard, at least at, at this point. It does not look as though Tony Stewart's going to be a factor tonight. 
Uh, heartbreaker for that bunch as Tony just looks on in disbelief. He won a race here last night, but that's no consolation here this evening. Yeah, and Curry said uh, same old story. Well, they haven't had that many uh, oil lines come loose this year, so I, I'd say it's a little more deeply seated than we'd like. Lap 31, these pit stops, the fuel window is roughly 45 laps here at Charlotte, but everybody's taking advantage of the stop. Let's go to Bobby Gerald. Buddy Lazier just coming in, getting a cool drink of water and they're in and out of here very quickly. A nice stop for Ron Himmelgarn and company. Buddy Lazier, the 96 Indy 500 winner, won here last year. You can see Sharp just barely beat Buddy out of the pit. So uh, the, the Himmelgarn team had a great pit stop. Everybody just kind of skiing their way through and looked like something wrong there. They were in for a lengthy, lengthy stop. They were. He was one of the first in, but he wasn't uh, one of the first to get out. Right. Ray had come in, actually, the second man in behind Kenny Brack, if uh, notes serve correctly, and he was one of the very last outs. So we'll get an update from the Conseco team and see exactly uh, what went on down there with the uh, Texas connection and find out what's cooking right there. It was it, it was interesting looking. Complete. It was interesting looking out of the back of the Greg Ray's car, this car right here, uh, the right side, it looked like it was burning a lot more uh, fuel than the left side. That was a dark blue flame on, uh, just raw on the fuel right. There. Exactly, and uh, the left side didn't appear to have that. So we'll get an update there shortly as we were working caution for the second time. Again, brought out with the problems from Tony Stewart. There comes Mark Dismore, who was the race leader at the caution. He's the second race he has led this year. Led 27 laps in the season opener at the Walt Disney World speedway in Orlando and route to a fifth place finish. Well, but the key here is, Eli, he came in a la lap later than everybody, so he's going to be at the back of the pack. Now, I don't know if they had uh, some kind of communication problem or whatever, but all the rest of the leaders stopped uh, before he did, so he's going to be at the back of this pack and have a ways and, and uh, s some bodies to try to get back around. Schmidt is still on the pit lane for service. Others making stops now of those who are a lap or more down. We are working under caution. Lap number 32 of 208 here at the Charlotte Motor Speedway. Let's go back and watch that uh, stop for Greg Ray and the Conseco bunch moments ago. And watch the fuel hose there. Let's see if that's where the uh, problem cut. Well, yeah, it looks like the fuel hose won't disengage. That's what it is right there, Tom. Yeah, it doesn't look like they have much room. The, 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 the hose is pretty tight, so I don't know if he's a little bit farther forward in his pit than they want him to be, but it doesn't look like there's much room for error there. So that's what transpired moments ago on Greg Ray's stop as the field will be getting the one-to-go signal. Looked like Hamilton almost got nipped there going out of the pits also as uh, the Reebok team finished service on his car. Jeff Ward in for yet another visit here at lap number 33. So pit stop's the name of the game here. Dr. Jack Miller, you see him on pit road coming straight at you. There's Wardy's team back in yet again. He was in at lap 32 and now again here at lap number 33. What'd be interesting to uh, maybe our guys in the pits, Bobby or Vince, maybe we get to the Kelly team and ask them what happened to Mark Dismore in that situation, why they waited longer than everybody else. Now watch this. Here's Kenny Brack coming out of the pit lane. Again, he doesn't have room. The tire, oh. the car in front of him, uh, they got a tire out and there wasn't room to get by. believe these are real tight pits. I mean, these things are set up for the stock cars, so there shouldn't be that kind of problem developed. Meanwhile, the big Texan is down there watching his team's work. A.J. Foyt, an update from him. Well, A.J. Foyt's uh, team and Greg Ray had some problems with the fuel hose. I believe A.J. communicating with uh, Greg right now, but they took particular interest in the replay that we showed them on TNN. Uh, A.J., what happened on that stop? Well, actually, uh, we tried a new fuel nozzle deal, and it just got us in trouble, but uh, we'd be all right. He had, was a little bit too far out. The tire was out there, and like I told the crew. Forget that it ever happened because we've got a long ways to go and it ain't no sense worrying about the first stop. It's, that's racing and uh, I told them just get their heads back together. We'll be alright. Pep talk from A.J. Foyt, his driver Greg Ray still in solid position. As you see on the restart now, everybody working themselves through that bright orange and blue machine. Andy Mitzner, he is the rookie in for the injured Eliseo Salazar, who was injured at Dover in the practice accident the weekend ago. And Mitzner, a rookie, was down here here in the Charlotte area, was going to go home Thursday. They called him, 
and said, you want to run the car? He said, you give me a couple of dollars and an airplane ticket home when the weekend's done? I'll do it. But there is Sharp now who has made the move and taken the lead away from Michener. So Sharp now shows the way with Lazier in second, Kenny Brack, and then Michener here on the restart in lap number 36. Well, here's the battle for second. Kenny Brack coming back through the troops right underneath Lazier. So uh, one of the Foyt's team car is, is got in and out of the pits decent, and uh, he's going back to the front. And we're riding with traffic. Buddy Lazier right, right here. Traffic. You can hear on the radio they're talking about traffic. Tony Stewart has just come back out onto the racetrack. go by Jimmy Kite and that other purple car you saw there goes Cheever and the blue Cheever and teal car Goodyear, yep. and the Rachel's car right underneath the, the Pennzoil car so that's on the fifth and there you ride with Scott Goodyear now well look at the front Cheever's looking for a way to get around traffic Eddie's he looked high looked low but there was no place to go Stefan Gregoire you see him going by in the uh, two-tone blue machine and as we mentioned, Tony Stewart is out there running again, making a couple of laps at reduced pace. There's a good fifth place scramble again. Sheever, Goodyear, and Dismore. Well, you can see it's not taking Dismore long to no. get through the pack here. He's all the way up to fifth or sixth at this point. And then again, Kenny Brack up front. He makes the move and grabs the lead from Scott Sharp at 217 miles an hour. Breck, five miles an hour quicker than Sharp on that last tour around the mile and a half. And there, Dismore makes the move around Goodyear. So move Dismore up to sixth, Goodyear back to seventh. Running with Scott Sharp now. You can see there he just shifted gears. He changed the gear position again. They've got two or three high gears that they can select from, and uh, he just chose a, a different combination than uh, than he had before he got past. The winner at Dover Downs International Speedway. You read the numbers 209. Again, that's a screen on the, uh, it's a digital situation. He can punch up any kind of readings he wants. If he wants temperatures, he can see that. If he wants speeds, he pushes the button and gets, that's what he's on now. So it's, they've got a lot of technology in these cars and, and, and uh, they can really see a lot of what's happening. And there you see the telemetry. Remember the rev limiter is at 10,000 RPM. Again, you saw him select a different gear, so I'm not sure they've had a stop now. Maybe, they don't, maybe they're not happy with their fuel mileage and got to reduce the RPM. There's a great battle with Dismore and that red machine moving around Cheever. That'll be fourth spot changing hands, but they've got the lap car of Guthrie just ahead of them. They'll have to woe it down just a second and get around him. And you see Tony Stewart right there back in the mix. Well, whatever, uh, we thought Stewart's deal was a little, uh, a little more serious than that, but but uh, I'm not sure if they added oil because they left a lot out there, but it's uh, it's back at speed. Now, Vince, he's six laps down, but at least he's out there. Tony well, Stewart just break on his oil pump. He had a fitting break on his oil pump. Larry Curry said the car should be strong. The problem is, obviously, they lost six laps with that, but it's not a major mishap. Just a fitting broke on the oil pump. He should be out until something else happens. Well, again, that could be, uh, you know, related to the roughness of these racetracks. And I don't know if if it's the same uh, same piece they had at Dover last week, but that causes and a problem. Look at Lazier. He's down to 195 miles an hour now. So he is some 16, 17 miles an hour off the pace. The Reebok team goes by. That was Mitchner. Ray goes by as we ride with Lazier. He's down to 192 miles an hour. Being bypassed, he's all the way back to eighth. There goes Goodyear, so he's back to ninth. So something amiss. Yeah, I don't know if he's lost his cylinder or what, because he's using a lot of all the throttle he's got. It's just not going very fast. Vince, what are you hearing? Down in Ron Himmelgarn's uh, area, Team La Lazier. What's the matter, Ron? I, I can't hear you right What's now. What's the matter, Ron? We're experiencing some fuel pressure problems in the car, so we're not sure exactly what's happening, but the fuel pressure is starting to drop on us. And Buddy's been communicating on to you the radio that it's been very rough out there. Is that true? Oh, absolutely. There's some bumps out there pretty good. The car's moving around quite a bit, but we'll get a hand. We're going to pit right now and change the tires and check on a few things.
so he's coming in right now. Here comes Lazier. And let's see what the team is able to find. But again, with everybody else going 215 miles an hour, even a semi-routine pit stop, Tom Sneva, is devastating. Yeah, it is. I think what they're going to check on is what's on TV later tonight. here putting his hand up saying don't know what the problem is meanwhile Kenny Brack is in traffic that is he to the inside in the power team entry he'll pick his way around Stevie Reeves the rookie making his IRL debut here tonight you got to be quick but you got to show some patience also well especially in traffic uh, but it's nice when you're running up front when you have a car that you know can go it's a lot easier from a driver's standpoint because he can pick and choose his spots. The guys that run second, third, fourth, and fifth, they've got to press the issue. They've got to try to close the gap. But when you've got a good race car and you know you've got a good race car, you can be a lot more conservative in traffic. Jeff Ward in that orange and white machine. He's running in ninth. Stefan Gregoire is that blue car. He is two laps down in 16th position. Then you come to the red car of Greco and then Paul as they work themselves through race traffic here on lap number 50. And that's Jeff Ward, that orange and white car. The blue car, Stephen Gregoire, and John Paul Jr. right in the middle of this bit. If you're an Andy Mitchner fan, they are in for a pit stop here at lap number 50, an unscheduled stop for that Reebok car. Yeah, we might want to check what that's all about because they were just in a few laps ago, so I don't know if he felt he had a tire going down or what. There again, Tony Stewart, middle of the screen, just joining us. An oil fitting problem earlier in the evening. He is now being shown still six laps down in 20th position. That's real tough. When you when you lose five or six laps in a race and you know your shot for the win is uh, dissipated severely, it, it's hard to get real racy and and it's uh, it's a tough situation. You can't afford to take too many chances, but he's got to try to make points. If you're curious about Mark Dismore, who led earlier, he now finds himself better than six seconds off the pace being set by that white power team entry. There is Dismore working himself through traffic now in the Kelly machine. Let's get an update from uh, their pick. Area. All right, Eli. Mark Dismore is now up to third, but the question for Ron Hector, crew chief, is why did you guys wait an extra lap to come in for the pit stop? Uh, basically, we weren't quite towards our pit window yet, and at the last minute, we decided to come in. We were already past pit entrance, which is in entering turn three. I don't really think it hurt us too bad. Um, obviously, Mark's got a really good car, and we have all the confidence in him. He's back up to third, like you say, so we're looking forward to a good finish here. Mark is charging, and that should answer your question. Tom Sneva, there was some speculation in both Dismore and Sharp's pit before the race that they would try to make this a three-stop race. Yeah, that's, uh, you know, things happen in a hurry. They got to make split-second decisions out there. When to fuel, and, and like I said, they were trying to hope and stretch it, get to their fuel window, but when they saw all the other leaders pit, uh, it sort of dictated what they were going to have to do. And the leader is Kenny Brack in that power team entry. Earlier this year, he led a lap at Walt Disney World. Led 23 laps at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, but hasn't finished better than third. He did that at Texas here on TNN back in June. The Delphi Automotive Entry and the Kelly Machine battle basically nose to tail. Working for second spot. They are already good seven seconds, though, behind Kenny Brack as we look from Sharp back towards Mark Dismore. Yeah, this has got to be a tough situation from an owner. Actually, Dismore ran up in the back of uh, Sharp. He's actually a little bit quicker, but now they're in traffic in the air off of Sharp's car is holding uh, Dismore up right now. So it's sort of a catch-22. Brack is about three or four seconds out. Uh, this teammate might be holding up the other one a little bit. That gets real frustrating. We're at lap 63 of 208. Two cautions if you're just joining us. Raul Boisel lost an engine at lap number nine. And then Tony Stewart with the oil pump fitting problem at lap 29. Watch the spread here. That's Breck right there, the race leader. And you'll pull all the way back 
towards that second and third place battle that we were talking about a while ago. It is some seven seconds in arrears. And you'll see what that looks like at some 214 miles an hour. Still waiting and still waiting. And there they come right now, just behind Stefan Gregoire and that blue machine and the rest of that traffic. So there you see what seven and a half seconds looks like from first place back to second and third. And Breck is in his uh, Dover car, by the way, Tom. They had a bunch of bolts and stuff that were uh, pushed out by the vibration and what have you, but they tore it all the way down and, you know, made some body part replacements and so on. Right. Well, actually, Breck ran real good at Dover. He had a problem early. They had a fuel injector problem, and so they had to stop early. They got down a bunch of laps, and I know Kenny was real frustrated because he thought he had a, a race car that was quicker, quicker than anybody all day at Dover, but again, he got down early and really couldn't force the issue. There you see second and third place, still seven and one-tenth seconds behind the race leader. They go around Jim Guthrie's machine as Bobby Gerald has been updating us from the Sharp pit area. Bobby? Eli Scott Sharp just radioed to his crew a few moments ago and told his engineer David Chris that he was suffering from a little bit of a push situation out on the racetrack. So uh, my question would be for Tom Sneva, Tom, as the, the night starts to cool down and it just starts to cool off a little bit, how does that play into the handling of the race cars and what sort of adjustments would we look for from Sharp's team once he comes into the pits next time? Yeah, well, actually, as it gets cooler, it really should help the whole uh, the whole handling characteristic. The cars actually will get a little bit faster in the racetrack. You see him split, split traffic there. It gave Dismore a chance on the outside. And if Sharp's got a little push condition, that means he's got a lift in the corner a little bit. The car won't turn as well as he's like. He's got to roll out of the throttle. Now, if you don't roll out of the throttle, you heat up the right front tire. The hotter the right front tire gets, the more push you get. And that's probably why Dismore was able to get away. So there you see Sharp in third right there. He's got Cheever behind him in fourth, just three-tenths of a second separating them. There you see Gregoire in the blue. Sharp, we ride with him right now. Sports Illustrated. <laughs> we brag on a guy and he goes up in smoke. And Bobby, a lot of long faces down there in the Rachel's pit. That's right. I'm with Owen Snyder and Owen, uh, we saw the big puff of smoke. What did he say? I said the uh, motor, you know. I mean, that was, uh, that was pretty close, but, uh, you know, we're running good. You were certainly running good. Is it, is this a terminal problem? Well, I would say so. I would say so. Yeah, anytime they throw out that much, it's, uh, really wrong with it so we, you know we'll have a look but i think it's uh i think we're done for the day you know tough break for owen snyder and eddie cheever and his team keep in mind though guys we did see the smoke earlier big time from tony stewart and he was able to get back out in the fight but eddie apparently thinks it's done and you know something these stock block vh last year tom uh, they were waiting and looking for reliability and now that they have found the reliability it seems as though the teams now like racers will are starting to take a few more liberties and the engines are starting to pop well they got to push them to the limit and it's in sometimes they don't find the exact limit but you could see bobby's question to owen sort of startled him what he say in the radio and uh, eddie's pretty vocal on the radio i'm sure he didn't say just motor i'm sure there's some other stuff that that owen couldn't tell us about that'll be the fourth dnf of 1998 for eddie cheever though the first due to pure engine failure as you look at the race leader kenny breck who took over the top spot here at charlotte from Andy Mitchner in a series of stops 
back at lap number 26. Let's go back to pit road. Well, there's Tony Stewart, and Tony, it's another disappointing night for you. And I, I know this is so frustrating. I mean, and you've had that question thrown at you before. What ultimately puts you out tonight, and what do you think this does now to the title chances? Well, uh, we had something in the motor go. Uh, we had a... I don't know exactly what was leaking early in the race, but uh, they got it changed. We got back out, and uh, you know we're out there running in sixth gear, which is our cruise gear to save fuel and, and to turn the, the car less revs. And we blew by Dismore, we blew by Sharp. I mean, we, we've got the fastest car. I mean, I can't thank Team Menard enough and Larry Curry and the guys. I mean, they give me great race cars and uh, makes my job a lot easier as a driver. But you know, it's it's hurting us in the points right now for sure. I mean, uh, I guess right now we're going to have to shift our focus to worrying about finishing races instead of uh, winning a point champion. I mean, we, we never really changed our plan on how we race anyway as far as the points go, but uh, and we just, we're just in a string of bad luck right now. I mean, when we finish, we finish well, and, uh, you know, we got a great race team here, and, and these guys are, you know, with the V6s that we used to have to run, they had this disappointment a lot, and they, they're really a strong team. They gel together well, and they're not going to let this get us down. We'll get back on, on track soon. All right, well, I wish the, all the fans watching on TV tonight could have seen this guy last night behind the wheel of a midget. Sorry to see you out, Tony. Yeah, too bad we can't run a midget out there right now. <laughs> That'd be exciting. <laughs> it would be the third DNF of the year for Tony Stewart. He had, of course, the uh, failure at Indianapolis. We were all riding with him at the time, as you might remember, on uh, the telecast and also at uh, Texas. Well, tough, it, tough weekend. It really is. And, uh, you know, it's like for a racer, it's a little bit like, you know, you're real fast. You know you're real fast, but you, you don't finish. It's a little bit like in golf when you can drive the ball 300 miles or 300 yards, but you can't putt it. Yeah. I understand that. <laughs> nor can I drive, nor putt. So uh, <laughs> I know exactly of what you're speaking. Pit stops now. The race leader is in on the top of the screen. You've got Dismore in the middle and Scott Sharp on the bottom of that triple split. Let's see what they do. Lap 76. A.J. Foyt's crew for Breck. Quick work there. Goodyear coming in just in front of... Well, you see the confusion. Right. They had trouble with the air gun on the right front of uh, Kenny Brick's car. So another pit stop problem for the Foyt team. And Sharp is going to win the exchange. He and Dismore will drag race it off the pit lane. So I guess this time it's Kenny Brick's yeah. problem. Uh, have a problem. Time to have a problem in the pits. And uh, his teammate, Greg Ray, beats him back out of the out of the pits. And Ray had the problem earlier, if you weren't with us, when the fuel hose chose not to disengage. John Paul Jr. has problems also in that Jonathan Bird Vision Air car. Well, they're trying to get the starter over there and get it plugged in. All of this at lap 76. We go back to pit road. And let's give you an update, guys, as John Paul just gets out of the pit in Jonathan Bird's machine on Mark Dismore. When Dismore came in, they gave it a big turn of front wing, added front wing for Mark Dismore. We also anticipated the same thing coming from Scott Sharp. That was after a conversation with his engineer, David Cripps. He said they were going to add a little front wing to try to get rid of that push. So that's the story on the pit lane. We are 76 laps into the 208 laps that make up the Visionaire 500. The Pep Boys Indy Racing League is live tonight here on TNN Motorsports. Pitch of the Visionaire 500 is being brought to you by Peerless Faucets, the do-it-for-yourself faucet. Let's step back to one year ago, the inaugural Visionaire 500. Buddy Lazier, the eventual winner, but not before this thrilling 200-mile-an-hour battle through traffic with Billy Boat in the number eight Conseco car. Then June of this year, blinding speeds at Texas Motor Speedway. This time it is Greg Ray who must settle for second as Boat in the green Conseco car takes the trip to victory lane at the True Value 500. But then on lap 92 at the New Hampshire International Speedway, the New England 2. Billy Bolt met with misfortune. In that accident, he suffers a broken left femur. It's left him sidelined for this year's Visionaire 500. But we are tickled to be able to welcome him to the broadcast booth here this evening. Though, Billy, we'd much rather be talking about you out there on the racetrack. Great to have you along here tonight. Thanks, Eli. I can't say I'm happy to be here, but uh, it's nice being up here to be with you. Quite a run right there for a fellow you know.
Oh, well, the power team entry, your A.J. Foyt teammate, uh, they have run awfully well. Absolutely. You know, K-9 had lunch today, and he said he was ready to go, and I think he's fired up. But Vince, they had a problem on the pit stop moments ago, and they're back in six. What's the deal? Well, you see the air gun right here. They had an air gun failure on the right front, and it cost them a lengthy stop. Otherwise, they were just going to add a little uh, wing in the front. Otherwise, the run has been terrific. Tommy LeMans told uh, Kenny Breck, don't worry about it. We've got a long way to go. Be patient. We'll get back to the front. And the green obviously displayed here at lap number 80, complete on the board of 208. Scott Sharp is the race leader. Jeff Ward is second. Mark Dismore is third. That yellow car for Goodyear is fourth. Breck is now moving up into the fifth spot as he bypasses Greg Ray on the start. And Billy Boat, it's got to be so tough, not only just being out here, but just watching somebody else in your ride, even though you know you're going to be back in in time for the next race at Pike Speed. Absolutely. It's kind of like having somebody else take your girlfriend to the prom. You know, it's uh, you got to sit back and watch. And, you know, Greg's doing a great job tonight in the Conceco car, but I definitely like to be out there. Look at this four wide here at Charlotte. Well, it's not taking Kenny long to make up for the pit stop problem. I mean, he's just running right around the bottom of the racetrack, Eli, and going to the front. Yeah, when we tested here, we both had great race cars, and I think Kenny really feels a lot of confidence right now, and I think he's looking to go back to the front. You know, the weird thing we were talking before, uh, Billy Bolt, the fact that both of AJ's teams have practiced pit stops here, and though you're the two teams that have had problems here tonight, it's strange how that happens. It is. You know, AJ, AJ was very adamant about uh, having good pit stops tonight, and now we've had problems a couple times, but uh, they'll come back. Riding with Scott Goodyear, you see Greg Ray going by in the Conseco colors there to the left of your screen. He's in fifth, Ray is. Goodyear in that yellow Pennzoil Panther running in sixth. Well, and you'll notice uh, a couple of these restarts, Greg Ray hasn't come up to speed quite as quick as some of the other guys. It takes him a lap or two to get going, so Billy, any idea what that might be? I think I can think of is maybe he's having a little bit of trouble shifting the car. Maybe they're missing a gear or always he's, or he's lost a gear in the car and he's uh, just having trouble getting the RPM up. Once he gets it going, though, he, he heads back towards the front of the pack. With Scott Goodyear moving inside of the rookie Stevie Reeves, who in that instance did a very good job just holding his line, letting the faster cars get by. And here goes second spot now. Breck is to the inside of Dismore, who's to the outside. Well, you can see Breck's car wiggling. He's down low. It's real tight down there. You've got to pinch the car a little bit. And, and it got uh, maybe a couple more wobbles than he wanted to feel out of that thing. I think Kenny got on the brakes real yeah. hard right there when he had was behind that lap car. And uh, we got a little excited. I think for him for a minute. Yeah, you have Tice Carlson there in that car that's painted like uh, Tony Stewart's machine. I uh, was one of Tony's backups a week ago at Dover, and they just didn't really want to force the issue there. Well, Kenny will wait a, a half a lap or two, wait for the heartbeats to come down slightly before he goes back after him, Eli. Took over the lead number 40 the first time as Buddy Lazier now is back on the racetrack after extensive repairs. He's only run 51 of the 87 laps thus far, but the Hemmelgarn team has him back in the race now. There's Brack. Right now, three and a half seconds off the race leader, Scott Sharp. the top six cars right now are running Goodyear tires. So I think Goodyear's really done their homework at this racetrack to uh, build a good tire for these guys. Well, Goodyear has actually been a little more consistent towards the top. I mean, the Firestone's been quick uh, with Stewart qualifying on the pole, but the rest of the cars all up front were on Goodyear's. Eighth and ninth on your screen there, you saw Marco Greco and Brian Tyler just nearly tangled moments ago. Well, they run into those corners uh, too, too abreast, Eli, and, you know, they don't have to wiggle too much. These guys don't have fenders. They can lean on each other like the, uh, the cup cars, so... Um, I don't know if they close their right eyes so they don't see each other or what they're doing. Taking their way through race traffic. Again, going inside of Stevie Reeves. Dr. Jack Miller at the tail end of that line. And the only Nissan Infinity still running. Jimmy Kite had one, but he parked it back on lap number 29. And the old Aurora, the dominant power plant on the circuit. Though I think Nissan has made some ground up, have they not? Yeah, they really have. They've been working real hard. It, 
it's real tough when you only have one team running the uh, the equipment. It's it you know your your R and D time uh, increases substantially. So, but they have gained. They've lightened the motor up. They've uh, closed the gap on the horsepower, and uh, you know now it's just just a matter of time getting more cars involved. That black machine, Donnie Beachler, he's running an 11th spot right now. He wasn't here yesterday. Again, he was back home. His wife had a baby yesterday, a girl. They took two laps of practice with Jimmy Kite at the wheel. But basically, he said, I have very few laps. They lost an engineer in practice the other day. They're somewhat untested, but running well. That man is not untested. That's Scott Sharp, a veteran, a winner a week ago, and leader tonight here in Charlotte. We have a new leader here at the Charlotte Motor Speedway as Mark Dismoy took the lead from Scott Sharp just a handful of laps ago. As he went off into the corner, Tom Sneva was actually fairly effortless. Well, there's a little bit of traffic here, and Sharp might have had to roll out just an ounce, but Dismoy had to run off the corner and just blast by. You can see the traffic, though. I mean, these guys are hustling these cars down in the corner, but look at Dismoy. Right in the middle of the corner, he's able to get back after the throttle and uh, just drive around these guys. Third time he has led here today, led laps 24 through 30, again lap 32, and Vince, the Kelly Bunch is awfully excited. That's right, Donna Dismore, you're looking at her now, uh, Mark Dismore's wife, as she watches the replay of uh, Mark passing Scott Sharp, and maybe the most cautiously optimistic man at the old racetrack is Tom Kelly, the owner of both those cars. Good feeling seeing your guys run one, too. Yeah, I just don't want to race too hard against each other. We want them both to finish, but they're really both cars are running well, and couldn't be more pleased. How does this work for you, to your advantage as teammates running one and two? Well, number one, we can tell how the cars are handling and compare notes on that, but they can sort of watch for each other and help each other out, hopefully, before the uh, end of the race comes, so it does definitely help us to have both cars up front. Tom Kelly of Kelly Racing, his team is 1-2 uh, right now with Mark Dismore and Scott Sharp. And Billy, you know, we've not talked much about, let alone the car that you will be driving, but that guy right there, Jeff Ward, that orange and white machine, cutting his way through traffic pretty well. Yeah, Ward, he's been running real fast. Looks like he got held up in traffic just a little bit there, and Greg got a run on him, and uh, I think they're going to be racing for that position real shortly. Well, actually, Ward is very fast, and, and Greg's right there. Traffic's always a factor, and who anticipates and predicts it the best is the guy that's going to get through the cleanest. It'll be halfway next time by as Andy Mitchner makes an unscheduled pit stop. That's at lap 103 as that Reebok car is in. There you see the rundown, top left of the screen. Oh, oh gee. Man. That, that, that could have been, that been big time that, right there. That's right down the straightaway. You get flipping there, and uh, you're not going to stop till uh, maybe February. I bet Dismore's <laughs> heart's beating right now. What do you think? <laughs> I would think definitely. As we see a great second-place battle shaping up there as Breck and that white machine in slow. Sharp got him for second spot. Well, I think it surprised Sharp a little bit. You saw him wiggle to the outside. That, you, that usually indicates that uh, he was real surprised. By that move. Look how smooth Sharp is on the wheel there as we see the leader Dismore go around John Paul Jr. When we got that look at Sharp there seconds ago, very much like a week Whoa, ago. Trouble. There's Sharp. Sharp. Sharp in problems. It's like Donnie Beachler Donnie? Yeah. involved too. Yeah, he caught Beachler. Beachler just got nicked uh, as a result of that. Caution on the speedway, lap 105. That's Beachler there. You can see the right rear tire where he got hit. It's knocked the tire off the rim. So Scott Sharp right there. And Donnie Beachler. Tangle coming off turn number four. Well, Scott's getting out of the car. That's always a good sign. But uh, you can see the right rear uh, removed from the vehicle. Came to rest pretty close to where the vehicle stopped. Yeah, that's right there coming off of turn four. And uh, it's definitely very bumpy there. Any little altercation, uh, it's real easy to get in the fence. It's also a spot on the racetrack where habitually, even if your car's handling well, it tends to push. Right. The, the track tends to push on you. We'll take a look at it again from up high. You'll see what happened in the corner. Sharp is behind Breck. He oh, oh thing just, loose. Loose. just got loose. That's what happened. Donnie was a victim in that one. Yeah. 
Donnie's just trying to get by. Look at this. But right Sharpie there. comes off the wall pretty fast, and uh, Beach just didn't have enough room to get by. But he ran up. Sharp was actually running up on the back of Kenny Breck. And I don't know if he had to roll out of the throttle a little bit or whatever, but the back end just jumped sideways. Let's watch this with right Sharp. Right there over that bump, I bet. Oh, you can see he was down on the apron there. That caused him one wiggle. Right there. Or that caused Breck to wiggle. Too big a hit for Scott. No, that was like a, that could have been a lot worse than it was. Right. But I don't know if you noticed, uh, right in front of uh, Sharp at that time, Kenny Brick actually got down on the apron, and right. it caused his car to wiggle. Now I don't know if that caused Sharp to have to jump out of the throttle or not. If he jumped right out of the throttle, right over that bump, it it may It'll have knock helped get him a little bit sure. loose. So caution on the speedway for the fourth time this evening. It comes out at lap 106. We're just past halfway in the Visionaire 500. Believe what's going on in what should be the relative calm of a pit stop. Greg Ray has no reverse, has a spin in the Conseco car on pit road. His teammate Kenny Brack moments ago again had problems with tires on the pit lane trying to exit his pit stall. It's the motor, remarkable. The motor's still running, though. Greg was able to keep the motor running. He just couldn't turn the car sharp enough. So he, He's going to get back out in front of the pace car. So he's not going to lose a lap, so this is going to hurt him a little bit in the running order. That's the voice of Billy Bolt, who takes back over in that number 11 car in Pikes Peak, the next event on the Pep Boys IRL schedule. These pit stops at lap 108, relatively routine, one would expect. But that was anything but the case. And again, for the AJ 14s, watch this. First, you'll see the 14 car, middle of the screen. The white car. Right there. He can't get out again. Can't get out behind the sky. And there's Ray in the green car. He just tries to accelerate. Just gas. And gasses it and spins the thing out. But he kept the motor running, which was real key in him not losing the lap. Absolutely. But he can't turn it sharp enough to get by these tire barriers right there. Vince has AJ bitten the, Has he bitten the head off of something yet? No, AJ's, uh, in fact, uh, has been smiling. AJ, if you guys could stay away from this pit trouble, you'd be in command. Well, that's quite true. I don't know what the hell's wrong with the crew. I chewed their ass out. I worked them today till they damn near fell down, and all we're doing is making one mistake after another. This is crazy. I'm going to have a meeting in just a few minutes. Thank you. AJ obviously feels like he's got the fastest team on the track, but it's the team in the pits that's causing him problems at this point. Just remarkable. And again, if you're just joining us, here's why we're under caution for an incident that happened on lap 105. The look on that face says, I know AJ is coming after me. But you, you can see Kenny Breck, he gets down in the apron in the white car and it wiggles severely. Now, I don't know if that affected Sharp. Scotty might have, here it is again. See Kenny get down on the apron. Oh, we we missed Kenny on that one, but Brick gets down on the apron. It caused him to slide up high. Now Sharp might have been trying to turn the car down low to go under Brick, and uh, that coupled with the with the roughness right. of the racetrack, you can see. see it. Yeah, it's just real tough. Tough to tell Sharp you. Sharp just the back end just jumps out. There you see the Kelly car, Mark Dismore, as he was on pit road. That was the first spin of the year for one of the Kelly cars when Scott Sharp went uh, spinning before. What it also means is we're going to have another first-time winner for this year because Billy Boat's not in the race, and Tony Stewart, Eddie Cheever, and Scott Sharp, the previous race winners in 98, are already gone to the garage area. Someone will be visiting Victory Lane for the first time in 1998 when this Pep Boys IRL race winds down. Jeff Ward is the race leader. We'll talk more about him when we come back. Triathlons as a hobby. I watch triathlons on occasion. I didn't realize he hit the wall that many times. <laughs> <laughs> Eli Gold, Tom Sneva, Billy Boat, Bobby Gerald, and Mr. Vince Welch, who will update us on why Mark Dismore keeps pitting out a sequence. Vince, what's the deal? Uh, the word is, I just spoke with their pit, they want to run under the yellow as long as possible, burn as much fuel under the yellow before they bring him in and then refuel him again. But they say the car is terrific. They made no adjustments. Mark Dismore says it's a very smooth run. They're back in fifth after that stop, but they're confident they can move to the front before it's over. Billy Bolt, at what point does fuel calculate?
regulation uh, start outweighing track position or vice versa? I'd say I'd rather have the track position because you get back there in the back of the pack, so many things can happen back there when you're trying to work your way through the field. Yeah, that is an unusual strategy because uh, traffic and, and when you're running this fast, a lot of things can happen when you're trying to get back through the traffic. But, but fortunately, the car is handling so well for Mark that, uh, you know, it, it makes it easy to get around him. But if one of those guys have a problem, he can take you with him. We're a half lap away from going green. Let's get an update on Scott Sharp. He's just down in the garage area. That's right. He's been given a clean bill of health by Dr. Henry Box. Scotty, what happened? I don't know. You know, we were just fighting the car a bit through. It seemed like it was sliding around a lot all day. And uh, we tried to tighten it up, tried to tighten it up. And it ran really good off that last restart and then just started to go away a little bit. And I ran through three and four and all of a sudden just snapped. I mean, it was gone. Uh, really, I feel bad for the whole Delphi MCI team. These guys have worked so hard. Could have really picked up a full bag full of points on Tony today, but that's not meant to happen. What do you think about the chances now of your teammate Mark Gizmore, who's been doing such a fine job? I think Mark's driving the wheels off that car. It's a really fast car today, and I, I think odds on he should win this race. Greg Race. Greg Race. Slow down there. You know, I'm not sure what's happening there, but again on the restart. Yep. Danny Brack in the white car underneath. Brack is right there to the inside, trying John, to work around. John Paul on the outside. Right, works around that race traffic. The yellow machine Scott Goodyear closes right in. <laughs> closed right in on the grass is yeah. what he looked like he closed in on. Kenny looks real strong. You know that, that thing with Greg, it could be he couldn't get the car in gear. You know, he's been having trouble on those restarts. He could have got it stuck in one gear, and now he can't accelerate. That's what happened to us at Indianapolis. Riding with Scott Goodyear. One of his team owners, quarterback Jim Harbaugh, not here. He's with the Baltimore Ravens. They've opened up NFL training camp. This is the first race that Harbaugh has missed this year, but I am told they are together. The team members are watching at a party in the Baltimore area, rooting this guy on in third spot right now. Well, that's good. You're trying to get underneath uh, Greco right there, but uh, Marco is running real good right now. And finished third at Dover a weekend ago, and that's the only car that team has for Marco Greco. Dick Simon and the guys went through it totally here this weekend as Greg Ray makes it down pit road right now. He'll come into the attention of the crew at lap number 116 as you watch Goodyear work traffic in his third spot. Yeah, and Billy, you indicated that transmission problem is what you had at Indy, uh, and you think it might be similar? It seems like the same kind of situation. You can see they're looking at the back of the car right there. Um, you know, trying to figure out what it may be. If it gets stuck in two gears, they got to pull out a little tong there at the back of the gearbox and see crew chief Craig Bernowski down there trying to do that right now. You have to just pop it out of the gear so it's, it, it gets stuck in two gears. Yeah, it looks like they got the speed wrench on something, trying to get they take to something off back there. Pull that rear cover back. Vince Welch, you got a better angle. What are you seeing? Yeah, again, uh, just to kind of reiterate what uh, Billy said, it is indeed that same problem. The car just won't come out of gear, so obviously uh, it's not going to be any good out on the racetrack, so again they brought it in. Now they've got some smoke coming out of the back end, so it's just been a, uh, a day that has continually gotten worse for Greg Ray and the uh, Conseco AJ Foyt Racing Team. They've now lost four laps and remain on pit road. They will likely lose yet some more as you see the rundown. Not talk much about the number 81 team, Brian Tyler. Now with a solid sixth, although he's already a couple of laps down. Well, we got some great racing going out there, Eli. I mean, these guys are battling, uh, and it might not even be for a position, but they're having some good battles out there. 208 laps make up the distance. You see 118 are complete. We've had four cautions. The 15 car, Andy Michener. Andy, can't make the move inside of John no, Paul. No, but he's Jr. getting pretty racy, and he's giving John Paul all he wants. Lazier on the inside now. Uh, Andy had to roll out of the throttle there a little bit and gave those guys behind him a, a pretty good run on him. John Paul is running in 10, and the other fellows are further laps back. In the case of Michener, he's back in 12th, and Lazier running back in 19th. None are on the same lap, but still a good scramble, Billy. Mark Dismore there, he's probably got the faster race car trying to uh, come up through the field and get by him. Well, again, because of his pit strategy, it's making Mark work a lot harder than maybe he would like to, but uh, but that's the plan they've gone with. Looking from John Paul's machine backwards. You heard the uh, spotter helping him out. Still there, clear. Riding with Buddy Lazier now as Mitchner goes by and Dismore go by to the inside. Again, Lazier, he has completed only 84 of the 122 laps. He's back in 19. 
17th spot. It's a good shot if you watch Buddy's helmet there when, you can, when he's coming off of turn four. Right, his teeth are going to hurt when this race is over. <laughs> no question about it. His back hurts from Dover, and it doesn't feel like it's going to get any better before this weekend's over. I think they got a lot of goodies, goodies headache powder down here, don't they? <laughs> yeah, they do that. The leader, Jeff Ward, turning the second quickest laps of the track right now. There he is. The fourth race he has led this year. He finished second at the Walt Disney World Speedway and is now seventh in points while Greg Ray sits and waits. Continue watching a battle that is not for position, but it's great racing on the track. Lazier and the Purple Machine having just finally blown by the man we are riding with, John Paul Jr., who, as you see, is in eighth spot. Again, like you said before, Tom, maybe not Where for position, start? but these guys are going at him hammer and tom. They got a yellow. Yellow. You can see yellow the lights on the, on the end car right above the steering wheel inside John Paul's car. They're blinking on. That indicates to the driver there's a yellow on the on the race track. Tice Carlson right there and turn number two comes to a stop. That's the car that Steve Knapp would have driven, but in that rule that the Indy Racing League has, I guess the best way to call it might be a seven-day knockout rule or something. After getting a slight concussion a weekend ago at Dover, Dr. Bach just wouldn't clear Knapp to drive, so Tice Carlson took over for the weekend. Yeah, Knapp uh, hit the wall real hard out at, at Dover, obviously, but I don't know how these doctors tell when these drivers are, are not goofy and when they are, you know? How do you tell where they started at? Really? Yeah. <laughs> Dr. Bach's pretty good, though. He's been more, a little more on the conservative side. You know, I wanted to run here, and he uh, told me I probably shouldn't. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, he, they, were, they take really good care of you, the whole IRL staff does, so they do a great job. And if they err on the side of conservatism, you really can't argue with that. Meanwhile, we talked a lot about Davey Hamilton in the pre-race segment of the show. The Reebok car right there, it's a Delora this weekend. After the first six races, they had the G-Force chassis, but... Uh, events very honestly they've been a quiet top 10 today uh, what are you hearing from them well and you talked about them moving back they're having some throttle problems and uh, one of the things that really compounds that problem not only does it cause you trouble out on the track but when the team comes in to pit they have to turn the engine off every time and of course you know you're going to lose time in the pits when you got to shut it down so uh, this is certainly something that uh, the knee house motorsports team is going to struggle with throughout the rest of the evening where they got to get it qui uh, fixed quickly it's, uh, it, we heard on the radio early, Davey was having the throttle hang up on it a little bit. He was actually having to pull it back with his toe. And then the crew, they play mental games with the driver a lot of times. They say, don't worry, when the thing gets warmed up, that problem's going to go away. And I'm not sure it has. I can tell you what Davey was thinking on that comment. Right. <laughs> <laughs> we are under caution here at the Charlotte Motor Speedway for the fifth time. Tice Carlson's machine spun and stopped in turn two. The top four currently on the lead lap. We're back in time for the green flag here in the Visionaire 500. The Pep Boys IRL here at the Charlotte Motor Speedway live on TNN Motorsports. Jeff Ward is the race leader. Kenny Brack, Scott Goodyear, Mark Dismore, the only four drivers on the lead lap. Fifth is Ari Leyendijk. Tyler is sixth. Paul is seventh. Oh, Wardy didn't take long to get gone. No, it's it's always easier when you got clean air in front of you. It's, uh, it's easy to get a little bit of a jump uh, on, on some of the other guys out there. But there's some good racing back in the pack right now, and, and Greg Ray's back out there, so I'm not sure how many laps he lost, Eli. Ray right now being shown in 15 spot. He is 15 laps down. Meanwhile, Bobby Gerald is down on pit road. Let's get an update. We're standing alongside Mitch Davis, who is the team manager for Jeff Ward. And so far, so good. It's come into your game plan exactly. You'll have to make, what, one more stop? Yeah, we're going to make one more stop. Uh, we're that right now, we're racing with Kenny Brack and Scott Goodyear, and I think we got them covered. So if we get this one more window in, we'll be uh, right on the money. They'll be hoping for a yellow flag, Eli, sometime right after lap number 150. Matter of fact, he's got it circled. Lap 158 on the chart. That's when he wants to see that yellow. They can take it to the house from there. If you're a Tice Carlson fan, by the way, they are still out there running in 14th position, being shown 10 laps down. And as you see the leader, how about a nice tip of the hat to Stevie Reeves, an IRL debut here tonight, and he's running in
in ninth spot right now for the rookie. It's a darn good show. Yeah, it really is. And, uh, you know, he's being real careful and cautious out there and trying to keep the thing out of trouble and just trying to get laps because that's real important in any kind of racing event. Track familiarity has to help, though, too, Billy, with him having run a number of NASCAR Bush Series races here. I'm sure Reeves can bank on that just a little bit for some comfort level. Absolutely. You know, and Stevie's probably, every lap he's running, he's getting more comfortable, he's getting more confidence. He's going to be a force in this league before it's all done. In the Who's Hot department, we talked of Reeves. Harry Leyendijk is in fifth. He is a lap down, though. And there's the man who's showing the way, Jeff Ward. Well, who's hot right now is Kenny, Kenny Bragg because he's yeah. closed the gap on Ward. Now, whether he's got enough to get by, this is going to be fun to watch. I think Mitch might have been a little optimistic that he had Kenny covered there. What do you think? Well, you saw his eyes darting around. He wasn't, <laughs> uh, you know, you can say one thing, but uh, what you really feel might be something else. <laughs> We're within shouting distance of another pit stop, though, Tom Steva, certainly. Uh, what in the world does Breck think about, uh, not, let alone Greg Ray, who right now is in 15, but what does Breck think about? They've had problems of some sort on virtually every stop uh, as we watch third and fourth place Goodyear and Dismore are they are they basically dreading their upcoming pit stop or what well hopefully they've straightened it out but what might have happened is it looks like where they marked their pit Breck was actually forward in the pit box and it looks like Goodyear probably set his pits up uh, the mark so it's back in the pit box so it's helping it helped their team and helped the point team out because uh, Greg Ray's right behind him so the, the teammates gave each other room but what it caused is Breck to move forward. Goodyear's a car in front of him in the pits, uh, move back, and, and it makes a real tight pit box and exit strategy for Kenny Breck. Now we got A.J. Foyt over in uh, Kenny Brack's pit, so there might be a little bit of manipulating going on over there. Uh, A.J. getting things straightened out for this next pit stop. Well, it'd be real interesting, uh, Billy, if we could get you to communicate with Foyt and maybe have him move uh, Kenny back in his pit box to help him out in the next stop. Yeah, he definitely doesn't need that kind of problem again. Pit stops for some. Andy Mitchner is back in as you watch smoke coming oh. out from Dismore's machine. Wow. Caution on the speedway as there will be no mosquitoes in turns one and two here at Charlotte. They've just fumigated for all of them. What a heartbreaker for Dismore. That's a tough deal. Oh, I mean, man. He's had that uh, throughout his racing career. A lot of strong runs, but not much to show for it. He did have a great run going. He was one of the quickest cars on the track. That is very disappointing for that whole team. Mark Dismore going off into turn number one. The engine expires. He'll join Raul Boisel, Jimmy Kite, Tony Stewart, Eddie Cheever, Jim Guthrie, Scott Sharp, and Donnie Beachler behind the wall here in the Visionaire 500 on TNN Motorsports. If you're just tuning in, Dismore's led many a lap here this evening and did so in, in pretty dominating fashion, too. Yeah, in various segments, but, uh, you know, the competition's so close. These guys make adjustments on the stops and uh, get their problems corrected, and, uh, you know, so that's, that's, that's just great racing. Meanwhile, Jeff Ward is the leader. Just yesterday, we asked him his impressions of racing here in Charlotte, where motorsports is definitely king. I don't even think there's any place in the United States, maybe besides Daytona or Indianapolis, that has such a racing background where everything, everywhere you go, it's racing. You see something about cars or faces of the drivers in the restaurants, and it's uh, it's pretty neat to go there and have the, the community so involved in racing as, as those other two other places. So it's, it's neat to come here and the enthusiasm of the, the crowd and the spectators, and it just makes it real nice for the drivers to come here and perform. of 208. Jeff Ward is in, along with everybody else. Well, again, you can see, well, there's Ward, but you saw Breck and Goodyear come in together. Those are the two that have been uh, squashed up together every time they've been in. You know, I think if you look, I think there's more room in between the cars now where they may have either moved uh, Scott Goodyear forward or Kenny back, so he didn't have a problem like we did last time getting out of the pits. Well, again, no problem that time. Nope. Breck gets out. Oh, that was close that at was the blend close. line. Meanwhile, Vince Welch has caught up with the interim driver of the Conseco car, Greg Ray, done for the evening. Greg Ray not smiling like he was when we talked to him before the race. Uh, what an adventuresome night for your team. Yeah, I tell you what, the uh, AJ Conseco team has done a great job all weekend long. You know, we led the race uh, early, and I felt like we had a car that could uh, win the race. I mean, we are just biding our time, and, you know, I, I tell you what,
tell you what, again, my hat's off to AJ for giving me the chance to fill in for Billy Boat. Unfortunately, tonight I didn't do him any favors. I, I made a lot of mistakes out there, and, and I just can't tell you. It's been a long time since I've been this disappointed in myself. Greg Ray, not happy, but he'll get other chances. He's a fine driver, and uh, someone will put him in a seat, whether it's Thomas Knapp Motorsports the rest of the season or someone else down the line. Kenny Breck, I talked to team manager Tommy LeMans about whether or not they can go the distance on the fuel. He checked the board at lap 145, and he said, it's so close, we can't call it right now. Maybe we can make it, maybe we can't. It'll be right down to the wire. Meanwhile, there's Mark Dismore's car. It's been towed back to the pit lane. Second straight engine failure for that team. Last week, they lost an engine at lap 43 at Dover, and their evening apparently done here after leading many, many times around. That is the race leader, Scott Goodyear, has the Pennzoil Panther team in front. Where does Napa keep over 200,000 different parts? Right up here. Now remember, your belt tension on this is critical. What kind of car is it? Well, I'll sell you all the struts you want, but I wouldn't recommend putting them in without the right tools. I'm sure we have it. Okay, is it a 77 or a 78? Because they changed the carburetor in 78. Actually, that's not a stupid question at all. I know what it used to be. You don't stay at Napa long handing out the wrong answers. And I'm not planning on going anywhere. America running. Everyone gets fresh flowers for an anniversary or prom date, but fresh flowers lack a lifetime guarantee. I take small true value buckets and with the help of my wife Punky, uh, just a what if, put various master mechanic tools in them to form an elegant and useful floral motif my handier customers really appreciate. drink out of a paper cup. Eat at Dog and Suds. Drink our world's creamiest root beer out of one of these. Unless you're riding in one of these, and then you could drink it out of one of these. People tell us they get their food a lot faster when they come to Dog and Suds. Let's find out. Hey, it's a new track record. Move it on. This summer, we've got the hot movie. Mm. I know that, so let's go! With the coolest yeah. stars. Go! From around the world. 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. How do I get it? Call your program provider now and demand it. Because this summer will be hot. Showing off is how you get to be a star up there, brother. And the coolest place to be is BET Movie Stars 3. Goodyear, Kenny Brack, Jeff Ward, they are the front three, they are the only three currently showing on the lead lap as we see Breck now work himself through traffic, we ride with Scott Goodyear. Kenny's got a strong race car right he now, does. he yeah. feels very confident. He got held up a little bit in traffic on the restart and Goodyear was able to hold him up for a corner or two, but uh, Kenny got a great run off that last corner. Once he works his way through this traffic, he's going to have some clear track and uh, he's going to be looking pretty good. Well, he's not looking too bad right now. I mean, he's going away from Goodyear. Breck at 210 miles an hour that last lap to Goodyear's 206. And Vincent looked as though finally the pit stop was relatively uneventful, at least from this angle. It was a great pit stop for Kenny Breck when he came in, and A.J. was very happy with the uh, power team performance. He said, uh, he radioed to Kenny Breck and said, don't worry about the fact that Goodyear beat you out. Take him on the restart. And you saw it. Kenny Breck moved right around Scott Goodyear on cue from A.J. Foyce. When Goodyear led, he was the eighth different leader this evening. Kenny Breck now is back out in front. This is out of the back of Goodyear, um, and, and Jeff Ward is looking for a way to get round. Ward's a little bit quicker than Goodyear right now, but he's uh, trying to size him up. Again, traffic's a problem getting around Marco Greco. It's, uh, playing the traffic is a big part of a driver's job. It makes all the difference on these mile and a half tracks. You lose your momentum just a little bit, you can make up a ton of ground. And it's amazing, only 15 cars 
cars are running, but still traffic, particularly on the restarts, very much a problem. Well, again, they're running 210, 215 yeah. miles an hour. They're, they're covering a lot of real estate in a short amount of time, and if they have to blip the throttle, it can really kill momentum. Around inside of John Paul Jr. Meanwhile, Mark Dismore, having retired the Kelly entry moments ago when the engine failure took him out, let's hear from him down in the garage. Eli, it was so disappointing for Mark Dismore. What a great run you had going here today. We're sorry to see you out, Mark. Yeah, it's just uh, lately here I've been uh, I've been jinxed, and I'll just keep trying. You know, it looked like we were in a good position tonight to get uh, a, a third of the way to the MCI Million Dollar Deal, and uh, you know to move forward and uh, pet boy points and didn't happen so we'll go to Pikes Peak and see what we can do. You were racing with Breck, Goodyear and Ward out there at different times. Which of those three do you think is the strongest here to maybe bring it home? Well, my car my car all by itself was really, really good. In traffic, it was uh, a little bit sketchy, but I think for the last, the way we had the thing strategized at the end, I think we would have, uh, I think we had enough for everybody, to be honest with you, but we'll never know now. Again, sorry to see you out. Thank you. You heard Mark Dismore talk about that MCI Pep Boys million dollar bonus. Remember, if any one driver wins here tonight and at Atlanta and at the Las Vegas race, all of which you'll see here on TNN Motorsports, then that driver and somebody out there, one lucky fan, will split $1 million. You can enter at any Pep Boys location or on the internet at mciracing.com. And if any driver wins two of the three TNN telecasts down the stretch, well, that driver and a lucky fan will split $100,000. So keep an eye on that uh, when you go by your nearest Pep Boys location. Well, we heard Dismore talk about his car was a little sketchy when it got in traffic. Ward is as quick as Goodyear. He catches him, but now the traffic, the turbulence uh, off of Goodyear's car has caused Ward some, some trouble. And, and sketchy in traffic, I, I think that means you got to hold your breath a lot harder when you get in traffic. <laughs> and the cars lose the, the front, the air off the front wings coming off the corner, especially coming off a of turn four. And really, you got to hold your breath because uh, you, know, you just don't know if the cars are going to turn. That's exactly what happens. When you lose the air off the front, you lose the downforce at the front end of the car, and the car won't turn. So you've got two options. One's to try to knock the wall down. The other one's to lift. But Vince, those guys are also three and a half seconds behind the race leader now also. You're right, uh, Eli. I uh, talked with John Barnes just a moment ago from Scott Goodyear's crew. He said they didn't have anything for Breck when Breck got by him. They're not as quick as Kenny Breck, but they feel as though if they stay up in the front, near the front, they can win this race in the pits. They believe that their Pennzoil Panther team is quicker than the other teams in the pits, and if it comes down to a last pit stop, they feel as though they may have an advantage. There you see the leader, and we'll go back three and three-tenths of a second from him to Scott Goodyear, and three and a half seconds back uh, from the leader, Breck, to uh, Jeff Ward. Only three guys on the lead lap, and you've got Ari Leyendijk in fourth, as you see that spread from the leader back to second and third. Ari is on a lap of his own in fourth, then in fifth, John Paul Jr., Marco Greco, they are on, alone, on their own lap, running fifth and sixth. You've got Stevie Reeves now up to seventh ahead of Hamilton in eighth and Greg Warren in ninth but again those three drivers all on their own lap but uh, some pretty good battles particularly there and, and a great run again for Stevie Reeves in his IRL debut tonight well and Vince hit on a good point I talked to the crew and then John Barnes with the Goodyear team uh, before the race and they're real proud of their team and the pit stops uh, they've worked real hard on it they've won a, a lot of pit stop competitions throughout the year and uh, and they say they could make up the difference and if they get a green flag stop, it could be a big, big factor in how this uh, race ends up. Billy Bogey, you just have to finally just face reality, let the leader go and worry about what you're dealing with right there? I think you do. You know, you can't push the car any oh. harder than you, than you can. John Paul Jr., he's running in fifth. He is slowing down at lap 165 within the fuel window, certainly, to take it the distance from here. But John Paul Jr. and the Visionaire team. Had trouble spotting his pit stall. Yeah. Two turns out of front wing. Two turns out of front wing. Now they're saying two turns. Reset fuel. Two 
turns out of the front wing, that means the back of the car is loose, and drivers don't like to drive a loose race car. When the back end wants to step out, it's a very uncomfortable situation. We heard earlier a lot of the teams were putting front wing in, and when you put front wing in uh, and, and run fast, that's uh, it's a lot easier on the driver, but for whatever reason, that car's gotten loose in John Paul, and that could be a handful of loose drive, can it, Billy? Absolutely, and it's kind of unusual to get loose at the end of the, uh, the race here at Charlotte, because usually the car tends to tighten up, you know, when we ran here last year we picked up a big push at the end probably cost us the race uh, I think yeah, so John Paul Jr. has been in Sam Schmidt's been in Dr. Jack Miller and the Bitch Mixner is in with the bonnet off the uh, back of that automobile we're at lap 167 of 208 Today's technologically advanced cars brake better than ever before. But it's up to your tires to translate these advances into stopping power on the road. The Firestone FT70C uses Unity technology to help your car stop when the rain starts. So if you're not driving on FT70C tires with you... TNN Motorsports live coverage of the Visionaire 500 from Charlotte is being brought to you by Pennzoil. Formulated for today's stop and go driving, stop, go, Pennzoil. Caution is on the speedway. Tice Carlson, after having a problem at the start-finish line, limped it all the way around to turn number three, but he's not able to make it the rest of the way. So caution is out at lap 171, and obviously well within the window of going the rest of the way to lap 208. So uh, caution for the seventh time as Jeff Ward runs in third. Vince Welch has an update. Good year in. Uh, correct that, Bobby Gerald. And Eli, here is the update, and they are rolling the dice here with Jeff Ward's team. Mitch Davis, who is the team manager, said that they needed just one yellow flag, and now as we say that, he had told us that they weren't going to come in, but we now see him starting to lay out for Jeff Ward. They will not need a lot of fuel here because Wardy's been racing the last few laps with the fuel dialed back to about 90%, so they were in conservation mode already. We do now, however, see them laying out for Jeff Ward, so we do maybe anticipate him coming, and we'll try to get a definitive word. Well, we'll keep an eye on that. Lap 172 of 208 here at Charlotte. Everybody waiting and watching. Kenny Brack is the leader. Scott Goodyear second. That man Ward is third. The only three drivers on the lead lap. Harry Leyendijk is running fourth a lap down. Marco Greco is fifth. He is another lap down. We'll keep a close eye on all three of these teams as they make their stop. I don't think Kenny's going to stop. Okay, he didn't come in. Didn't nope. come in. I think they can make it on fuel, but it's be interesting. So no stop for Brack, but Goodyear and Ward are in, along with Lazier and Hamilton and Greco and Ari Leyendijk. No tires. No tires for Ward. No, nope, just fuel for Ward. It's going to be disappointing for Kenny because the power team team is ready for him, but he, they must have had a miscommunication. Wardy beats Scott Goodyear out. Yeah, that's real interesting. Uh, Breck didn't come in. Uh, <laughs> again, I don't understand the theory, but uh, maybe they can they go the way, rest of the way, Billy? I, you know, I don't, I don't know. It looks like they're ready for him to come in, yeah. but he didn't. You know, I don't know if they just had some kind of miscommunication or he didn't get the message. Maybe his radio's malfunctioning or something. It'll be one lap to go when they get back to the stripe till they get green. Now, all the leaders came in at lap 146. Well, you'll remember now. Breck is getting ready to make the stop. Right? Apparently, yeah, he's tucked down on the apron. This, this could be very costly. It'll be very costly for him. Of course, dealing with only one of three cars on the lead lamp. That's something to remember. Now, he's not, he's not going to have a lot of traffic to try to catch uh, Scott Goodyear and Jeff Ward, but, you know, here at the end of the race, even a little bit is a lot. Well, right. and traffic upsets the handling, and it slows the guy down, so if the if the leaders can get away far enough, they could cause him some stress. Vince, he's in. Yeah, Billy Bone hit it right on the head. It was a lack of communication. A.J. had told Kenny to come in, and he did not. They were planning on the stop, and now uh, Breck has got fuel. They changed some tires, and he's still up on the jack. So now we'll see if uh, Kenny Breck can make up that ground. Before the pit stop, A.J. Foyt came to the crew, gave him a bit of a pep talk to make sure they had all their uh, bases covered, and they came in. It wasn't a great stop. They uh, 
gave two turns of wings, uh, two turns of wing as well, 16.9, but they had to put the car back up on the jack a second time. Maybe a costly stop there. Well, well it's AJ, a, it's, AJ stayed at the same hotel we are. Might just give him some room tonight, though. <laughs> well, that's a bad break for that team, uh, but it's going to be a good break for us because it's going to be uh, mm -hmm. a great show watching him try to go to the front right now. He's going to be fired up. I guarantee you that much. So it is the restart. Lap 175. Jeff Ward, the third car back there, the orange and white car, trying to get, get his way through the traffic. Goodyear's right behind him, first and second. Goodyear's that yellow machine. Jr., who is running in sixth, and there's Goodyear running by his lonesome. Well, Ward's going to have some clean air now, and he, he, I think he was a little bit quicker than Scotty last time, but didn't have enough to get around. But now he's out in front in the clean air. Goodyear gets around John Paul Jr. Behind them, you see it tangled there. Buddy Lazier still out there working in the purple machine. Manny laps down. He's in 16th spot. Yeah, they had a problem early, but the car's as fast well as anybody now. right yeah. now. This inside John Paul's car. Watch his head. See it's bouncing back and forth. And that was on the straightaway that it moved around as much as anywhere. So I don't know if that's some air turbulence or what, but the, the wheel doesn't look too bad, uh, as bad as his head did. Now here's Kenny Brack. He's going to work inside of Stefan Gregoire. Gregoire himself is in ninth, six laps down. And Brack is four and one-tenth seconds behind the race leader. Around Dr. Jack Miller. John Paul Jr. next to negotiate. Well, you can see him right down in the bottom. He's able to jump back into the throttle quite a bit quicker than some of these other guys. So the car is hooked up, huh, Billy? He's definitely got a good handling race car right now. The, the power team car is very good. It's just going to be a matter of if Kenny can catch him in open racetrack. You know, you hate to see that big gap. Um, and, you know, it's a lot to make up. He's four and a tenth behind still. But what he really needs right now is some traffic. If Jeff Ward's got a lot of clear racetrack in front of him, if Kenny can get some traffic, he can keep, make it up a lot quicker, but uh, he's not going to have that advantage right now. Well, again, late in the race with attrition and things like that, the traffic uh, sometimes thins out a little bit, so it's not maybe sometimes as big a factor late in the race as it would be early. Absolutely. Ward began the year, Bobby Gerald, to the second at Orlando and a fifth at Phoenix, but it's been downhill since then until tonight. It would be huge if they could turn it around here, Ian. Eli, and uh, on that last pit stop for Jeff Ward, they made a slight wing adjustment in the front, gave him a little more wing. They only added five gallons of fuel, but they already had some fuel on board, and the important thing to note here, guys, and, and I'd like for Billy Boat to talk about this a little bit, they've turned the dial now to full fuel, and his last lap was at better than 214 miles per hour. He's running about three or four miles per hour faster than he was when he had it at 90%, Billy. Well, they want to run, you know, they got half full power right now. They know Kenny Brax uh, trying to catch him, and they need to uh, and be running as fast as they can here at the end of the race. Fuel is not a consideration. They're not going to run out of fuel. So right now, it's just the fastest guy is going to win this race. Yeah, they actually got full power now. Uh, we noticed on the computer, Billy, uh, you know, Ward's going a little faster, but uh, Kenny Breck is two or three miles an hour quicker than what Jeff Ward's running right now, Eli. Right. And so he's uh, pressing the button down. 217 miles an hour plus as they get around Lazier. That is second and third. Good year in Breck. They are now two seconds behind the leader, so they are closing on war. Well, it didn't take Kenny long to get to Goodyear, so let's see uh, if Goodyear is going to present a big problem or a small problem for Kenny Gregg. He's catching him pretty quick, and he's running pretty fast. And this, this is out the back of Goodyear's car. This is for second place. Kenny's going to have to lift a little bit right there. But well, you can see how much lower in the racetrack he's running. That's right in the middle of the corner just a minute ago, and uh, he's able to run right around the bottom. That's for second place. Rex got him. At lap 184 of 208. And Vince Goodyear tried to hang with him, just finally had to give up. Yeah, Eli, it's, it's similar a situation to what we told you about before when uh, Goodyear didn't have anything for Kenny Breck uh, uh, for the lead earlier. Just does not have the power in this G-Force to run with these guys tonight. They
They did not test here. They made slow progress during the course of the week. And uh, as we mentioned, they felt if they could stay close and maybe win it in the pits, that would be their best chance. But obviously, they don't have the power to run with the front two cars out on the two, uh, out on this uh, mile and a half track. Well, they don't they don't have the power now. They're not going to get the green flag stop that they needed to maybe try to close the gap on these guys. So uh, uh, they've done a great job with the G-Force. Again, Goodyear and the G-Force chassis is compared to to the guys on both sides of them in uh, Dallara's. Isn't uh, Jeff Ward has a G-Force too, doesn't he? That is correct. You're yeah, right. Yeah, so he's, he's for a, you know, a G, he's got that G-Force of uh, Jeff Ward's working very well. But Kenny's coming hard. Huh? He, he looks just like he's got fire in his eyes right now. You know Kenny Brack is fire in his eyes. Is, uh, pretty intense. <laughs> I've never, I've never figured out who's the translator, who's the interpreting Swedish to Texan in that team. I do that. <laughs> you do that? I do that, yeah. That's probably what happened on that stop. <laughs> <laughs> Kenny couldn't understand him. 20 laps to go for Jeff Ward, Bobby Gerald. Eli, he does have the G-Force chassis, but coming into this race, Mitch Davis and Jeff Ford both said that they had a killer motor in this uh, number 35. Evidently, they found something in the development of their camshaft, and that's the reason why they thought their motor would serve as a little bit of an equalizer, even though they had the G-Force, which is considered kind of second fiddle to the Dallara's on the big racetracks. So that's the technical end of things, but right now the numbers and stories are very simply put. Ward, Breck, and Goodyear. AJ's hoping his man can pick up one more spot. Welcome back. Kenny Brack has just taken the lead at lap 195 from Jeff Ward. Brack, who made his pit stop out of sequence at lap 173 in some of the most daring racing we've seen, just powered his way to the front and then used Marco Greco's car as a pick to grab the top spot. Well, it was a great job, and if Ward's got a killer motor in there, that's some form of Godzilla in point star right now. <laughs> Unbelievable. Kenny Brack, who has not finished higher than third, in his Pep Boys IRL career. Did that at Texas this year. He'll be looking at 10 laps to go when he gets back to the stripe next time by. What? Take a look at what went on over the last few moments in some battles for the lead. Watch this. That's Kenny. Kenny Breck's back a little ways now, but they get to traffic. If they get to traffic, Ward has got to get out of the throttle a little bit. And look at the look at the run Kenny got on the outside, but now he's scraping. He's right up on the edge of the groove. He's up in no man's land up there. And that's 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 white knuckles there. And then this is for the lead with Greco and that red machine. Again, Ward tries the high side. He gets up on the edge of that cushion, and uh, it's just hard to get any kind of grip up there. Kenny's got a phenomenal race. The big man likes what he sees. A.J. Foyt can smell victory lane about nine laps away. Knocked his watch. Yeah. Loose there. He was so excited on that pass. <laughs> Rock was fifth in this race last year. Again, it was interesting. It took Kenny a few laps to get by. He closed the gap, but then he gets the turbulence. And uh, if Ward, could have kept him back a few more laps, he might have been able to heat up the right front tire on Breck and, uh, and really cause that pass not to happen. But uh, they got to traffic, and, and that gave Kenny an opportunity to get a little bit of a run. And Bobby, once he got by him, now he's pulling him by two and a half seconds. Yeah, it was very interesting, Eli. Just a moment ago, Jeff Ward's guys all were out over the wall, laid out for Wardy to come in. He had reported a vibration in his number 35 machine. They've now come back over the wall, and I don't know if the vibration went away or what happened there, but apparently they've decided to go ahead and soldier on here to the finish, because we do only have about eight laps to go. Well, a lot of times, you know, in that traffic, you saw Ward was up very high. You get into the marbles, and, and you can pick that up on the tires, and sometimes that'll cause a vibration, so you run a few more laps and get it scrubbed off. So the groove these guys are running to race three abreast can cause some vibrations. I would bet. You see Buddy Lazier right behind in that purple machine. He's showing right now some 40 some odd laps down in 13th position. But finally, we'll try and work himself free here. Now the leader is in race traffic. Down low. You can see him three wide down low. Around Tice Carlson and Dr. Jack Miller right there. Actually used his head pretty well. He got to that traffic quite a bit earlier, but uh, he knew he had enough car underneath him. He could take his time and wait for it to to spread out just a little bit. AJ says five laps to go. AJ's probably telling him he's got a good race car, he's got a good lead. Don't do anything stupid right now. He can win this race. Well, certainly Kenny Brack, if he can hold on here as he puts a lap on Ari Leyendijk, is a guy who has paid his dues from go-karts to Formula
Formula 3000 to Formula Opal to the Barber Saab Series, where he was champion back in the early 1990s. He was really due for a good race. You know, yeah. they've had a couple of really hard luck races, and uh, they've been fast, but just had a lot of bad luck. So I think he had, tonight was his night. You're right. This is the sixth race uh, that he's led of the of only 14 he's been in. Well, and, and last week, uh, you know, he felt he had as good a car as anybody, and they had that fuel injection problem early. So uh, he's got a smile on his face right now, and he doesn't want to feel any vibrations, does he, Billy? Absolutely not. Yeah, this is the time of the race that uh, you feel all those little things. You know, got a little bit of lead, and a couple laps to go. You can, you can feel just about anything going on in that race car right now. It'll be two laps to go. to the stripe two times remaining Vince Welch and it'll be checkers flags it's all smooth for Kenny Breck the car running very well obviously he's pulling away from uh, all the other contenders the main uh, point here for Kenny be careful going through the traffic otherwise it's home free to the checkered flag turn three and four Brian Howard has the white flag in hand one more time around the mile and a half for the power team and, and the whole AJ Foyt team, you know, that, that team is struggling a little bit and uh, I feel really happy for them. They, they really needed this. 32-year-old veteran from Karlstad, Sweden. And as we mentioned, he has tried and tried and on his 14th try, Kenny Brack is going to victory lane in the Pep Boys IRL. He wins the Visionaire 500 for AJ Foyt and the rest of the team. And a dominating victory by five and six ten seconds on Jeff Ward. Well, it really was. With all the trouble they had in the pits and things like that, they overcame all those problems to get to the checkered flag. A.J. Foyt with a big old smile on his face, Vince. A.J. indeed is very happy as uh, his team avoided problems in pit lane tonight, uh, both Greg Ray and uh, uh, Kenny Breck's team. A.J., congratulations. Uh, Kenny had a great run tonight, and uh, you guys oh. avoided some problems but you got it there all the screw-ups we made and then he missed the pits it looked like it wasn't our night but boy he missed the pits did you think that cost you the race well I really did and like I said we turned the hell out of the motor and K-Tech owe a lot of things to because baby who was hitting the rib limiter and it stayed together it was strong all night AJ gets a win Kenny Brex first and we'll go to victory lane and talk to the winner and all of that will be coming up in just a moment as TNN Motorsports has been with you and Kenny Brack on his first ever career win in the Pep Boys Indy Racing League. Back in a moment. Welcome back, everybody. Kenny Brack, a first-time winner on the Pep Boys IRL. He led seven times for 76 laps tonight. Why don't we go down to the Pep Boys Victory Lane Ceremonies and they see Vince Welch right in the middle of it all. Kenny Breck winning in the Pet Boys Indy Racing League for the first time. He's been close before, but his first time in victory lane, and he's getting ready to climb out of the Delara, putting on the uh, Visionaire 500 cap. The winner of the Visionaire 500 from Sweden, Kenny Breck, and he's <laughs> so tired he can barely get out of the car. There he goes. Congratulations, a terrific run. How about that pass with about 12 laps to go? You get by uh, you get by the leader, uh, Jeff Ward. Marco Greco was there causing some traffic, or were you using Greco to get by Ward? Yeah, we were using traffic to get by, and uh, we made it, so it was good. I, I, I can't thank the team, the AJ Boys and uh, Partin enough. You know, they gave me a, a very good car, and it was... Uh, it was a lot of fun out there today. When you first signed on with AJ and he called you to uh, join the team, you went out and bought a pair of cowboy boots and a cowboy hat. Maybe he needs to buy you something this time. No, actually, I did a, had a pina colada in a bar in Las Vegas, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, I, it was a great deal, and uh, he's given me a victory. It's, a, it's great to have a victory like this, and for a late Gunjer team owner like AJ, fantastic. A lot of people thought uh, a Swedish driver may not fit with the tech and A.J. Foyt, but it seems the two of you have been quite a match, A.J. Well, it is. I'm glad to see it. Red 14 and Power Team back Victor Circle. That's what I'm on all my racing, car 14, and I'm just glad to see Kenny here. I mean, he did a hell of a job, and kind of like the old 14. It looked awful beautiful tonight, Kenny, and you drove a hell of a race, baby. Thank you. Thanks very much. 
Kenny Breck, the winner of the Visionaire 500 for the A.J. Foyt Power Team. And Vince bringing it home second tonight is Jeff Ward, and that equals his best finish uh, on the season earlier at Orlando, a second place finish. He picked up the vibration late in the race, Jeff. If, if he didn't have that, do you think he would have been able to hold Breck at bay? Well, I don't know. Was, I, I was struggling through three and four a lot of the night, but uh, earlier in the, the race, uh, he couldn't. He could close up on me, but we couldn't get by, and I felt even though he was coming up, I could I could hold him off, but we picked up a real bad vibration, and you know I didn't know what it was. If it was a tire. I could see a line on the front tire, so I thought maybe it was blistering because we didn't change tires on the splash and go. So and the car kind of had a push all night, but um, you know he, I think he had us covered there at the end. But you know I wasn't gonna do any blocking, but it was a lot of fun. You know, we came close to you know real close to winning, but maybe next time. When it came down to it, the move that Breck put on you for the lead, that was in heavy traffic. Was that kind of a hold your breath situation? Oh yeah, actually I didn't know he was that close when I came up on, I don't know who it was in the turn three and he went way high and then uh, I knew he was there, but um, there was, you know, Greco got in the way a little bit off of two and he got a run, there was nothing I could do to hold him off. So once he got by, it was just, you know, to salvage second. But uh, this whole ISM team did a great job in the pits. I mean, they gave me the opportunity to win the race. Did everything work perfect and uh, we'll get one before the year's out. Well, it's going to certainly help you in the, the battle for the championship. You'll move up a couple notches. Yeah, we've had a string of bad luck here, but, um, you know, we're looking for some more sponsors to come on, and uh, things are going real well. It's just a matter of time before we win. It's just that hurts in the points. This is definitely going to help us because a lot of the top guys fell out, so it's giving us the right hope for the championship again. Jeff Ward, happy about a good run today. Ward, he's had a tough run of late with engine failure at Texas and Loudon and leaving early with the accident at Dover, but today he came home second to Kenny Brack. A first-time winner in the IRL. Speed here in the Visionaire 500, 158.408 miles an hour. Well, Eli, I don't know if you noticed, but Kenny Breck in Victory Circle, I mean, he was whooped. I mean, he yes. was still trying to catch his breath. So uh, he, he worked real hard to get the job done. Uh, the, his comment about pina coladas, I'm not even sure those are legal or served in Texas, are they? For medicinal purposes only. Okay. <laughs> Definitely so. <laughs> Scott Goodyear came home in third spot today. Let's hear from him. That's right. And before the race, Eli, you'll remember Scott was uh, talking about turn three and how he thought it might be a little bit evil here for him today. But uh, track was pretty nice to you tonight, Scott. Well, we'll take home third place points, but we got killed in turns three and four as far as speed was concerned. Could not go flat through there. Made the car better in the pit stops uh, through the event. I'm pleased with the guys and the team. Did great pit stops for me on the Penzo and Panther pack, and we moved up in the points, and that's what's important. Uh, Raleigh Durham's just up the road, and it's the hometown for Northern Telecom, one of our sponsors, and we got everybody here from Hard Rock Cafe tonight, so had to make sure we finished. Congratulations on a very nice run, your third place finish, and uh, further moving up in the standings, Scott. Well, thank you. That's what we got chased now as a championship. We got to be happy with third. All right. Scotty will be back at Pikes Peak, the next one for the IRL Pet Boys drivers, Eli. And that was a third place run for him ahead of Ari Leyendijk in fourth, and Marco Greco backing up his third place run of a weekend ago with a fine fifth place finish here tonight at the Charlotte Motor Speedway. And there you see again the unofficial numbers. Stevie Reeves down there in 10th position. Good run for him. Solid run for the doctor, Jack Miller. Yeah, and, and Davey Hamilton had trouble early. He's in that point battle as well, but uh, he was able to bring it home anyway. Further back from 11th on, Tice Carlson will take home 11th place honors, and Andy Mitchner in the uh, LSAO Salazar machine, the uh, Riley and Scott chassis. Only he, one in the field today with a, a solid finish. More solid than it shows. He actually ran pretty strong. I think he was up to fourth or fifth right. at one time and then had uh, some problems. I don't know if they're having a fuel pickup problem or what, but they had a bunch of unscheduled stops. And Billy, again, there you see Buddy Lazier who had the early problems, but, uh, you know, one of the quickest cars on the racetrack. He just was many, many laps down. Absolutely. You got to think about this race and you, get, you get have a problem, you know, it just kills you and uh, you got to be there running every lap. There you see, through 20th spot, Tony Stewart came home, 21st, Guthrie, Kite, and Raul Boisel, who was first out with engine failure on lap number nine. Ari Leyendijk, as we mentioned, finishing fourth today. The two-time Indy 500 champ is with us. That's right, Eli, and that'll be a uh, best finish of the season for Ari Leyendijk here with the fourth place finish. And uh, how would you describe the run overall for you today? Uh, on a scale of one to ten, about a five. <laughs> uh, Still waiting for that first win. Yeah. And it's by, uh, past my bedtime, too. We shouldn't be racing this long. But, uh, no, the car was uh, difficult for me during the race. And with a lot of attrition, I'm glad uh, everything uh, stayed in one piece. Uh, 50 laps from the end, I got stuck in fifth gear. So that wasn't good. But I was glad that it at least got stuck in fifth gear and not in a lower gear. Basically, just circled around and uh, wasn't competitive tonight, but, but strong enough to, to keep it running and uh, stay somewhat in the hunt. He called it a ho-hum run, but 
He's going to have to take it tonight. A fourth place finish. A nice job for Ari Leindyke. A veteran coming home, as we say, in fourth spot. But Kenny Brack gets the win. After being fifth here a year ago, he becomes the fifth driver to win in 1998 and the 12th driver ever to win a Pep Boys Indy Racing League event. Back to wrap it up in a moment. TNN Motorsports live coverage of the Visionaire 500 has been brought to you by Visionaire. Exceed the limits in the Visionaire Vantage. It's a whole new class of business jet. And by Pep Boys. Cars like us, people love us. Well, quite a race here this evening. Had a little bit of everything and very nice to see Billy Boat. Really only one incident on the racetrack. Uh, relatively minor, though I'm sure not to uh, Beachler and Sharp, but nevertheless, a good, clean, competitive race here tonight. Absolutely. A fantastic race for the IRL. And, uh, you know, the, these guys are really putting on a great show. It really made me... Uh Really maybe sorry I couldn't be out there racing with them. They looked like they had a lot of fun tonight. But Sunday, August the 16th, I know it's circled on your calendar, your return to the Conseco car. Absolutely. We'll be back for Pikes Peak, and uh, we'll be ready to go. Tom Sneva, final thoughts tonight. Well, I'll tell you what. There's some great racing going on out there. It's, it's too bad we can't show it all on one TV screen, but, uh, you know, they're going to have to block more than eight or ten rows of this grandstand off if they keep running this close, because it's pretty wild and woolly to watch. All right. A lot of you might have noticed the bottom eight rows here at Charlotte were not sold to the general public. A crowd estimated in the vicinity of 50,000 fans here tonight and they certainly saw their money's worth good side-by-side -side racing and if you like the high speeds well as we said when we signed on back at nine o'clock eastern time you've certainly come to the right place don't forget that Kenny Brack is the name that you want to remember as you stop by your nearest Pep Boys location the MCI Pep Boys million dollar contest is now underway if Kenny Brack can win in addition to tonight's race the victory in Atlanta coming up up on Saturday, August 29th, and the Las Vegas race on Saturday, October the 10th. You and Kenny will split a million dollars, so swing by Pep Boys and register. Big thank you to Tom Sneva, to Billy Boat, to Vince Welch and Bobby Gerald. I'm Eli Gold. Don't forget that TNN Motorsports brings you coverage of the Pep Boys Indy Racing League from Atlanta Saturday, August 29th at 9 p.m. Eastern Time. Now stay tuned. The Statler Brothers coming up next. Joined in progress for all of us at TNN Motorsports. Eli Gold. Good night, everybody.